Hey guys, I've been getting a lot of questions about some fern pictures that I posted yesterday. And so I just wanted to uh, show these in a little bit more detail. Most people are um, familiar with a fern, although there's like 10,000 different types. They're very symmetrical in structure. They typically, the, the fronds, when they first emerge, they're curled around in something called a fiddlehead. And uh, the leaves are very, very symmetrical in nature. In fact, a lot of times ferns are used in uh, fractal art. So uh, these were some ferns that I found yesterday. And again, this is what a normal fern looks like. And a fern is a very close relative of uh, moss. And these are the spores, which is how the fern propagates itself. But it propagates first into a very, very tiny um, little plant. It starts with a G. I can remember, never remember the name that lay flat on the ground. And ferns do not have seeds or flowers. It's a very, very old plant. We have tons of examples of ferns in the fossil record. And where you um, typically, you know, they'll they'll look like this, where they're they're very symmetrical, and sometimes they'll even have like a big leaf that comes out at the top, but it's still a very um, symmetrical plant in terms of geometry. And these were some ferns that I found yesterday, and they were growing under a live oak. Um, which is where you find them typically. They're usually in wooded areas. They like uh, very moist, uh, fertile soil. So they do really well in like the oak hammocks down here in Florida. And when I first saw this specimen, I was actually looking for something else. I was looking for passion fruit that were growing from vine in the tree. And it, the base of the tree had this big raised area of lots of fern growth. Now, ferns will grow out of like a rhizome, almost like a, a tuber along the ground. So this plant would have had like this bulbous structure underneath and then the next plant grows out of it this way and the next one this way and the next one this way as the, the shoot goes along the ground. Uh, but when I first saw this, I, I was like, wow, I've never seen a fern like this. And I didn't see the ones with the witch's broom at the top initially because there were actually four or five ferns that had leaves that were configured like this. And um, I couldn't get to them. I had to have Sean grab them because he had boots on and I didn't want to stand in this area. And when he ripped it up, this was actually coming out of the same rhizome. And so what we have here um, is just endless bifurcations. And in fact, this specimen shows it better where you'd normally have like one stem. It at some point here split off into two and then those split further into two more and two more. But then not only did they split along the stem line, but the leaves are all bifurcated. So where you'd normally have something looking like this, okay, where you have this straight line, it split and then it split again. And in some of these, they've split, I think there was one that split like six times, this one right here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, five oh, and six bifurcations on one leaf. This is probably one of the most messed up plants that I've ever seen. And I've seen some messed up stuff. I mean, every one of these leaves is different. There's no symmetry in this plant at all. Here we've got one that split one, two, 
three, four, five, six. Yeah, this will, this one split six times too. Um, I mean, even the little tops of them are splitting and bifurcating. This is just insane. And you, you know, symmetry is everywhere in nature. Even, um, you know, starfish. If you cut a starfish down the middle, it should be the same on both sides. Trees are a good example of that. Snowflakes are a good example of that. Uh, lightning is even a, an example of that. Things in nature tend to mirror themselves. And, I mean, this plant is just chaos. Absolute chaos. Here we've got a couple leaves at the top that look like they're starting, starting to grow normally, but they're just going to turn into that and probably if the plant had continued to grow. And what is really unusual is that a plant would get this far without um, the cells dying off the whole plant dying but because it doesn't fruit or flower and it's depending on the spores to propagate and this plant was growing already on an existing rhizome because I mean this bed of ferns, ferns was just massive so they'd been in the ground for a long time so uh, this could have been hit with rainwater that had particles um, it could be that there's a source close to where this grew. Um, they grow mostly, you know, in shade, like ferns just hate sun. Um, and it, it almost has an appearance of like a staghorn fern, which is a, a completely different plant, if you know what those are. I used to have one, uh, and unfortunately it died, but there's a lot of people that have them here in Florida because they love the humidity. They're an epiphyte, so they're different in that way, but it's still called a staghorn fern. Uh, I've spent the morning like searching to find out if this was some kind of like atypical uh, fern, but something that's like a recognized species, and as far as I can tell, it's not. And even if it was, it's got the witch's broom at the top, which does not happen in ferns, ever. I mean, this is something, I, you know, I'd expect to find in Japan. This is just ridiculous. And look at what we have going on on the top here. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but I mean, it's just bifurcation upon bifurcation upon bifurcation. Um, this specimen was found in Maitland, Florida, and Maitland is located in central Florida. It's uh, uh, near Melbourne, which had the highest iodine-131 contamination in the entire world outside of Fukushima because of uh, the rainfall that occurred in the weeks following the accident. Uh, if you can search any &E news, and we know that they've picked up cesium-134 and 137 in citrus down here throughout the entire state because it rained a lot. Um, in Florida after the accident. Florida got hit really hard and it's funny because we, a lot of people thought they were safe in Florida because they were so far away from Japan but it's where the rain occurred in the weeks following the accident that got hit so hard. And then it, Florida has some other unique problems. Um, we have the history of the phosphum, phosphate gypsum mining so there's contamination from that. There's contamination from three nuke plants that we've had here. Um, Crystal River is in operating, but they have a tremendous amount of spent fuel on site. And then, you know, we have a lot of wild weather. So um, the the wind patterns are, are constantly coming from different directions. So something could happen, you know, in terms of venting at Turkey Point. It could end up up here. 
And then, of course, there's, you know, the BP accident and the core exit and everything that came out of that. And Florida was hit uh, extremely hard with fallout from that. So there's multiplier effect of um, that creates, you know, illness, uh, color abnormalities. You see a lot of albino animals down here. Even a, we have an ar albino armadillo that lives in our subdivision. Um, I see albinism. I just found a, a, a rat recently that was albino, uh, and the rest of his uh, nest was not. Um, if it's in the plants and the animals, it's in the people, and that's another thing that you really notice when you're down here is a lot of sick kids, a lot of kids in wheelchairs. It's something that's really bothered me uh, ever since I came down here, and I thought maybe it's because we're in close proximity to Disney, that these were like, you know, make-a-wish kids or something, but they're not. They're Florida natives. Uh, cancer is outrageous. Uh, just on my street alone, in probably like 10 houses on the street, someone has either died suddenly at a young age or has developed cancer uh, at a relatively young age, under 50. Uh, or died of, of cancer but because once they found out they had it, they were already at like stage three or four. And it's not just where I live, like it's everywhere in Florida. It's a very, very sick population down here. And then, you know, we have, of course, a lot of sun exposure, increased gamma, and with grand solar minimum, that's going to be a problem for everybody. I posted a few links today on my Facebook page about that and on Patreon. So anyway, I wanted to share this specimen with you guys because it's just so unusual. Um, it's just a complete chaos of the way that these plants are supposed to grow. And it's very disturbing to me. Again, normal fern, effed up fern. Stay safe, everyone.